Knowing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is more than saying, I believe. Learn about Catholicism and become a premium member of RealCatholicTV.com today. Because understanding the price paid on the cross is worth more than the cost of a subscription. Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris, coming to you from Wagga Wagga in New South Wales, Australia. Yep, that's Wagga Wagga, which is about an hour's flight, roughly, west of Sydney. And this town has something you don't see going on very much in the Catholic world these days, a visible Catholic Renaissance. Now, owing to a string of excellent bishops who told the modernist influences to go jump in the lake, there is a very strong Catholic population that is extremely engaged in this very beautiful region of Australia. Certainly one brick and mortar example of this is the St. John Vianney Seminary, also called the College, built by Bishop William Brennan back in 1992. Against the advice of many of his staff, he was concerned about the training, the non-Orthodox training his seminarians were getting in other places. So what he did was what lots of people do when confronted with tough situations. He did it his way. His vision has proved correct, and today the seminary turns out solid, faithful priests who understand the crisis the church is in and emerge from their training well prepared for that fight. The current bishop, Gerard Hanna, has followed in his predecessor's footsteps, continuing to support and stress the need for faithfulness to the magisterium. Not wanting to be left out of the action in this Catholic Renaissance, the laity here have also built what amounts to another visible sign of this rebirth in the K-12 through schools, right behind me here, St. Mary MacKillop, named after Australia's first saint. The key to the growing success of the school and the faith in general here is a take-no-prisoners approach to the truth. As St. Mary MacKillop, for example, right here at this school, if you're a student, get this, you and your parents sign a pledge to attend Mass at a bare minimum of at least every Sunday and Holy Day. If you don't sign or you do sign and don't keep your pledge, see ya! The primary religious educators here are the Conventual Sisters of St. Dominic, a faithful and orthodox group of nuns who, by the way, as you can see from these quick snapshots, were more than happy to learn all about RealCatholicTV.com, watch the shows, and begin to incorporate them into their curriculum here. Yay! Now, among the classes, seniors here study Thomistic tradition, theology, and apologetics. Imagine that in a regular 12th grade class. Classes are offered which encourage intelligent debate. Among the topics which get research for debate are such phony baloney cultural myths like global warming that go largely unchallenged in the mainstream culture. Lay teachers here, another great story of success, they're also on the faculty, but they must be faithful practicing Catholics, and that policy requirement has drawn people from all over the Australian continent to come here and want to teach here. The school exists entirely outside the umbrella of the national Catholic systemic school system. In other words, it's free from being interfered with by liberals and modernists and the national Catholic establishment. The lay founders would die first before they would allow to happen to this school what has happened to so many other Catholic schools and colleges and universities all over not just Australia, but the entire Western world. And this brings up a bigger point beyond Wagga Wagga. You know, people here are asking, what's up in Wagga Wagga? Well, what's up is a rebirth of the church, and it's largely, hap largely happening through efforts like this. Faithful lay people, fed up of being shoved around and dumped on by the liberal establishment types and chanceries and powerful posts from within the establishment church, are taking the bull by the horns and simply doing it themselves. This, of course, creates all kinds of tension, but so be it. The three major organs that were for centuries instrumental in passing on the faith have largely become crippled and ineffective. Those three organs were the family, the school, and the pulpit. Today, Catholic families have been shattered by and large. They were delivered up to the prevailing trends of the world by those charged with their care. The wolves of the culture, and now they are divorced and contracept and produce as many fatherless children as the rest of society. The school, the central storehouse of knowledge, has become so corrupted that in many, many places around the globe, it would be best to actually just have the so-called Catholic school simply go bankrupt and shut down, then continue poisoning the minds of young people, all the while pretending to teach them <clears throat> Catholicism. Loads of parents have caught on to this now and refuse to send their children to these heresy factories and prefer instead to homeschool them. 
Obviously, here in Wagga Wagga, parents got together and established the independent St. Mary MacKillop School. Now, the third organ that would produce Catholic orthodoxy in passing on the faith in the past used to be the pulpit. But with the catechetical disaster that befell the whole church around the globe, seminaries weren't spared. By the tens of thousands, priests poured out of the church's seminaries in all these past years with horrible training, having their intellects corrupted by modernists on the faculties there as well. While it would appear that the trend is finally reversing, or at least greatly slowing, there are still lots of priests in the pulpits across the world preaching anything but authentic Catholicism, sometimes intentionally, other times through ignorance, and other times motivated by fear. But here in Wagga Wagga, a strong bishop, followed by another strong bishop, have taken care of that problem. And while a weak or cowardly types of bishops or a staff of modernists or politicians in the chancery can be huge obstacles to overcome, it does not excuse the laity from failing to do what they can do, what we can do. So right here in this diocese, when you look at these three organs, family, school, and pulpit, you see good news, a resurgence in orthodoxy contributed to by bishop and laity joining forces for the good of the whole church. As a result, Catholic families here are very strong and the faith is firmly held to and loved. While not every diocese may have a reformer bishop sitting at the helm, and there's not really anything the laity can do about that, so don't bother agitating about it, the laity certainly can do other things, and as a matter of fact, must do other things to advance the authentic faith. Prayer and action have always been the key to Catholic revival. Reporting from Wagga Wagga, God love you, I'm Michael Voris.